Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. So this video is really opening a can of worms. Oh, yeah. There's so much more to this um, than meets the eye. And so what this is going to be about is Tiamat. And we've been talking about this because we had touched on this with the guides. And what they gave us was fascinating. Um, but it wasn't, well, it just basically created a lot more questions than it answered. It, it tends to do that, you know, but I mean, I guess we're the ones asking. So if we're big enough to ask, I, I, we're big enough to hear the answer. Absolutely. And, you know, our history again, and this is where we get people that will make comments and say, well, you know, this is what happened. And well, where did they get the information? They've just read it in the history books. They've read it in the mythos. Yet the victory, the victors write the history. We have to recognize that. We've talked about how we get so much more detail when we go to the Sumerian tablets than we get in the Bible. Now, it doesn't mean that everything in the Sumerian tablets is exactly how things happen because you know again the victors wrote the history and when we go back to the Sumerian tablets maybe we glean a little bit more because this was a time when the quote-unquote gods or some of these quote-unquote beings that call themselves gods were walking amongst us and this is you know when earth was basically going through a fourth density experience and then the earth went down to a third density experience and then rebounded and we are basically about to go back up into a fourth density experience where the quote-unquote gods can be right here with us again certain beings meanwhile there's all different extraterrestrial and interdimensional species out there there are extraterrestrials that have been interacting with us throughout our time in 3d uh, there are other ones that come into the physical realm when we go up into 4D, such as the Anunnaki themselves. The Ejiji, who we read about in the Sumerian stories, uh, rebelled, that rebelled against the Anunnaki, saying they weren't going to do the heavy lifting anymore. So, according to the mythos, they created humans, Homo sapiens, to do the heavy work for them and to work the planet. Again, Garden of Eden story, mankind placed in a garden to what? To work the garden. It goes along with the Sumerian story. And so we're working the planet for who? Well, we're working the planet ultimately for the Anunnaki who are under the control of the Draconian Empire and who are under control of this AI intelligence, which we could call the dragon of old or Satan, whatever you want to call it. Ultimately, this story ends up pulling us back to something much bigger, the Lyran Wars. And humanity, we many might think, comes from the Pleiades, but the Pleiades is where humanity escaped to uh, when its home was, m many of their homes, planets were destroyed in these wars that have not ended and actually are going on to this very day. Right. You know, and, and a lot of things that we think we understand that we see happening on this planet <coughs> is about control. <coughs> sorry. <coughs> well, control and harvesting energy. Um, a lot of things that we think maybe are normal or just every day to day occurrences. No, these are things that are implanted in our energy fields to harvest our energy. And we'll talk more about that in another show. But we have to understand that we have to claim our sovereignty. That is the most important thing to help end these end these energy wars. I'm calling them energy wars more than more than anything. Yeah, because ultimately, you know, even resources that appear to be sol solid are still energy. It's just in a different form. So, you know, they have their stories, the Sumerian stories about this great battle of Tiamat between opposing forces. And if we go to the source that the powers that be like to use all the time, Wikipedia, that's given as their definitive guide to the truth. Sure. Uh, in Mesopotamian religion, Tiamat is a primordial goddess of the sea. Mating with Absu, the god of groundwater, produced younger gods. 
She is the symbol of the chaos of primordial creation. She's referred to as a woman described to as described as the glistening one. Suggested that there are two parts to the Tiamat mythos, and the first Tiamat is a creator goddess through a second marriage between different waters, peacefully creating the cosmos through successive generations. And the second, Chaos Kemp, Tiamat is considered the monstrous embodiment of primordial chaos. Some sources identify her with the images of a sea serpent or a dragon. In the Enuma Elish, the Babylonian epic of creation, she gives birth to the first generation of deities, her husband Apsu correctly assuming that they are planning to kill him and usurp his throne, later makes war upon them and is killed. In rage, she also wars upon her husband's murderers, taking on the form of a massive sea dragon. She is then slain by Enki's son, the storm god Marduk, but not before she had brought forth the monsters of the Mesopotamian pantheon, including the first dragons, whose bodies she filled with poison instead of blood. Marduk then forms the heavens and the earth from her divided body. Now, again, these things are rewritten all the time. And so, you know, Marduk became the primary deity at a certain time of the Sumerian people, especially in Babylon. He was recognized in Babylon. These these deities change place um, and in different places, you know, they might be called slightly different things, although they're not. It's not all Anunnaki gods, as as some would have, say, Again, when you're talking about primordial, then you're you're talking something different. But what we've gotten, and we're going to share um, basically a message that we asked the Galactic Federation about the story of Tiamat. It's quite different than what we what you're told. Again, the victors, and in this case, the Anunnaki. You know, this is what we got right here in these mythos. This is the Anunnaki ver- version because this is what they want us thinking. And so, you know, some scholars will say this is all about taming the land is what it really is. It's it's about creating civilization, taming the primordial chaos and, and, you know, creating city states and farming, etc., etc. And here they're blaming Tiamat and they're calling her the primordial sea goddess who died from her own vengeance. Well, again, this is what the victors, the parent victors at the time, want to get across. And so it just, again, this is a list of the major characters in the uh, Sumerian creation story, the Enuma Elish. Again, this all predates anything biblical by thousands of years. And this is, you know, what you see here, Marduk slaying Tiamat, and Tiamat being represented as a serpent or a dragon. And, you know, again... Is this how it really happened? No, what really what we got is something that sounds a lot more like Star Wars than like this type of mythos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, just information being different. And as far as coming from sources like the Galactic Federation, them giving us information that we can um, understand to be how everything was created to the best of our ability but again we're 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 lacking uh vocabulary words we're lacking um knowledge and information from from beyond our understanding so we bring this information in um as best as possible but i do believe if we understand where we've been we know better where we're going Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, when you look at, and this is the King James, yeah, that that Masonic version that may have been written by Sir Francis Bacon, who may have actually ended up writing Shakespeare's works as well. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, and it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness night, and the evening and morning were the first day. And then God said, let there be firmament in the midst of the waters, and let us divide the waters from the waters. God made the firmament, divided the waters 
which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament and so it was and god called the firmament heaven and the evening and morning were the second day and it, and it goes on talks about dry land appearing and you know many people have looked at this and said that what we have is uh two creation stories you know because god created the heaven and the earth but then the earth was without form and void as if there was some sort of destruction and then there's a second creation that takes place well there kind of is is what we've gotten again when we channeled vishnu it was very much like this when he talked about um basically his spirit moving upon the waters of space because space itself is water so to speak and of course many people think we live in a bubble because of these passages and in a way we kind of do but you could look at it like it's a cell the earth itself is a single cell and the cell is basically self-contained and then we have what we might call interstitial fluid that's out there in space that's in between the different planets so to speak if, if you're following that line of thinking but what we have is something very very different um, to share with you guys uh, here you see this is Marduk fighting Tiamat and making Marduk out to be the good guy he sliced her in half like a fish for drying half of her he put up to the roof of the sky drew a bolt across and made a guard to hold it her waters he arranged so they could not escape but reality again is much more like star wars in so many ways it's much more a, a sci-fi movie that we're listening in and instead of science fiction it's really actually science fact uh, yeah i mean there's so much information here just just sitting here going over this again is flooding in all kinds of stuff you know and as far as creation is concerned we have to be very careful what we what we create in our minds being very careful in understanding that our thoughts are things they are actual things so when we are thinking of stuff we need to be mindful that these are little little creations on a, a smaller level Absolutely. So we're going to share with you now, uh, Laurel from the Galactic Federation. This is about uh, 13 minutes that she's talking about Tiamat. And we we have a lot more um, that we will be getting and sharing on this because this is actually um, very involved, very deep. There's a, a lot of things going on in this whole mythos It's as far as what's the actual reality of what's going on so this is laurel from the galactic federation and the pleiadian high council you know we were starting to get information about tiamat and from what we've gathered earth was tiamat and tiamat was not completely destroyed but was impacted in a war can you elaborate more on this and the time frame we will do our best to give you a deeper understanding of how your planet came to be there are many things that have occurred from the time Tiamat was hit by an asteroid of proportions that we cannot even begin to explain to you. This asteroid we see was released from entities who are wishing to cause disruption. Tiamat, being a very nurturing, blessed entity, a very beautiful mother energy, had been crippled in such a way that she could not repair herself this sent a signal out to your consciousness 
and your source. Love, light, light, love, energy that could see that this planet was in distress. The source energy then finds itself moving into a rapid super consciousness to assist and save as much life as possible. Many came to her aid. We were able to stabilize this planet and create a safe space where she could repair herself. This left many beings confused, altered, changed, dead. It was an extreme disruption. These beings who then sent their distress signals out for help then received help from many of us. We saved as much life as possible. We helped the planet recreate herself. The asteroid belt that can be seen are parts of Tiamat that were not able to be repaired. There was many beings who came to the aid to assist much life so that it would not be lost. These beings were altered and replanted onto your planet. This information we are giving you was done over many, many years in linear time. It was created through the spiral of the universe that creates life. It had to be in balance. It had to be harmonious, the recreation of this planet. It was many hundreds of thousands of years in your understanding before Earth could be left on her own to grow and nurture. All of the beings, all of the records that you see are pieces of history that was left on your planet of all those beings that were at one point on Tiamat. The records are written inside your earth in various places recorded in ley lines and crystals of your history on earth. Those who are stepping out of their energy fields are beginning to read and understand this energy and the history of this planet and Tiamat. We are not able to clarify which asteroid or entity harmed Tiamat. We feel it was a weaponized entity. We do not feel that just a simple asteroid would cause such serious damage, such life-altering, life-shattering episodes that changed your entire cosmos. These beings have fled. 
not to be seen again, for their consequences are far-reaching. They do understand the karmic repercussions that would come to them and their generations. They have fled. They did not take responsibility, but many other beings did come to the aid to recreate earth and save those energies that otherwise would have been lost forever. This was a dramatic rescue for evolution as we were able to place your planet in a this we were able to save the records in various places around your planet. Many beings are able to receive, retrieve, and read these records. There will be more deeper understandings moving forward because people will have a deeper understanding of their energies as you evolve. We do hope we were able to give you information that is useful. Yes, thank you. Was Earth in orbit between Mars and Jupiter as Tiamat and then the orbit was moved to be more advantageous? We did correct planetary lines so that it would move back into harmony. What you see now is not exactly what your scientists say. What you see now is harmony being created and recreated the controllers, we feel, will not tell you the exact planetary timelines. They will not give you exact locations. We can simply say now that we have done this work. The harmony is being put back into place. Harmony does not come from a system of entities. Harmony comes from the planets and where they wish to position themselves. It is not as you have been taught. We do not have the correct language to help you understand the order of light. This planet you are on now has placed herself in the correct order of light so that she may maximize her ability to evolve and help those that she calls her children on this planet to sustain life and thrive in abundance. We do wish to speak to you in regards to this abundance. We do not have much more time with this channel. We have been speaking with her so that she might bring understanding to other people that it is truly time to become closer to your mother planet as they are creating wars and rumors of wars it is going to become more and more difficult to be one with your planet while you have the ability 
we suggest you start working on your skills. You might still have a few years before they transition the new system completely. We are extending as much as possible whenever possible. We want people to fall into a safe space and create the identity that they wanted to have when they came here to this planet. These changes, however, must happen. They must happen for evolution, just as the changes in your home had to happen for expansion purposes. Sometimes it is very uncomfortable, but this assists you and it helps you understand how powerful you truly are as a being of source. We should release this channel. Thank you, Laurel. Namaste. Namaste. So that was Laurel of the Galactic Federation and the Pleiadian High Council. And so, you know, if we just look simply to what they tell us through the Sumerian mythos, we're not getting even close to the actual story. No, and, and I don't know how many of you felt some kind of energy, but I just sat here and I started crying. And there that was a lot of trauma. It was so much. Yeah, there again, this gets into the giants and, you know, the beings that were on Tiamat because... Tiamat was in a, a different position before it was struck and almost completely destroyed. But Source, again, can bring things back into being. And so what we feel and from the information we've gotten is, is that the orbit was closer to the asteroid belt. That The asteroid belt, the, um, you know, as we, we were saying, that along with Earth is what was Tiamat. So Earth was basically formed from t what was left of Tiamat. And it, it was a horrible tragedy. But what we've also gotten is that there are um, complete planets that have been destroyed very much in uh, the manner of which we see, well, technologically from s movies like Star Wars, the Death Star, Star Killer base, all this, there really are technologies and there are beings out there that would actually wipe out all the life on certain planets. This is how diabolical um, the dark side truly is. And they have done that before. And so when we, you know, see these stories, really what they're telling us, what they're talking to us about is uh, you know really parts of the Lyran Wars because humanity was from the Lyran system and survivors had to leave that area and, and that's where they settled on the Pleiades as far as you know humankind or at least some of humankind there are many other different humanoid beings out there there are many so many different types of beings out there and, you know, again, this is part of the wars that go on against the beings that the uh, Law of One refers to as the Orion Group. And ultimately, it's it's the AI uh, component that's at the top of the heap with uh, the Draconian Empire. And isn't it interesting, you know, Draconian, Dra Draco, that whole word, you know, it, it, and it goes on down the line. The Anunnaki... Um, came to Nibiru as part of these wars. This is when, you know, they left and they were, well, th they will say they came to an agreement with uh, the Draco and, you know, they are working under the Draco now. And again, th they would say they came to an agreement to maintain some of their self-autonomy, but they had to become part of the collective, part of the Borg, which is going on on Earth right now as we speak. All right. You know, these these planets, these entities, 
have their own way of creating harmony. And what really stuck out to me with this um, transmission was the order of light. So I, I kind of want to go deeper in that because they understand where to position themselves for the most um, of getting the most out of source creation. So that really struck me. And I, 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 I think it like triggered a lot more information too. And I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of you had some kind of a reaction because this was a really huge endeavor but it's also showing us how much we can do when we work together and work with each other so many many layers of trauma and understanding and learning and knowledge and um you know ultimately finding uh our way back to source and finding our way how to um, reach out to one another in a very gentle way because there's a lot of trauma out there for everybody and now that our light bodies are coming online these traumas are being brought to the top for us to deal with. So it's as above, so below. I mean, it's all about that. Absolutely. And so while, while there is, again, one source, there is uh, one creator of this universe, we have these lower entities, you know, taking credit for creating everything when no, they didn't create. They're not of that level. These, these are just uh, lower fourth density uh, beings that you know are on an ongoing war against not just humanity but against in some ways source itself as you know they follow a counterfeit system this AI counterfeit system so when we talk about things like the singularity and you know the merger of human human flesh with robotics and be creating cyborgs and all this is all part of that counterfeit system this is all part of this is the bigger plan and would you really want to live forever or live for you know hundreds of thousands maybe millions of years uh, just you know being transplanted your consciousness transplanted into one other synthetic form after another me personally, I trust in source and it's perfectly fine to shed the organic shell and put on another organic shell. All this, again, it's, it's history that's been rewritten by the victors. And of course, they always claim to be something benevolent, something bigger than they actually are. But, you know, in reality, again, this system is a counterfeit system that that cannot touch on on source's original system mm. and, and just like any other um, parasite you know they take advantage of situations and move in and do what they can to feed their feed their own egos feed their own way of living and just sort of create everything to sustain only them and not really think about other entities because parasites they're really out to help themselves and and that's it they don't have that ability to um, reach out and think of other entities because they got one thing on their mind so ultimately tiamat was a goddess energy it was a divine feminine energy that was supporting tons of organic life and part of the original plan of source and it was almost completely destroyed but it has been reborn as earth and again, it's a goddess energy. It's a divine mother energy. And when we look at how much life forms are, are alive on Earth, you know, that's a blessing. It's an absolute blessing. And then again, the sun itself is a relay of, of light, which is gnosis, it's knowledge that's of an experiential nature. And it's, it's a, you know, again, bringing that light of source um, to all the creatures on the planet, so which are all the children of that divine mother. So again, we could go back and equate it to Shiva and Shakti, you know, the divine masculine, divine feminine principle, or, you know, looking at things from the spiritual component and the unmanifest into the manifest realm and the physical component, which still has the spiritual in it. It's all basically the Tao. It's it's the yin and the yang symbol that we see that it, together is a, a totality and a completion and a beautiful, uh, not just um, a, an eternal cycle of sorts. It, it's a spiral 
And uh, again, that's reflected in our, our very DNA mm -hmm. and, and the shape of DNA, that sine wave, that spiral that goes on forever. Right. And, and you know, what, what's interesting is before I really got into any of this, I started to learn to do energy work. And what I saw coming out of my own hands was really interesting. And it came out as spirals, you know, so all of that's like starting to make sense now. And, you know, kind of pulling your information together so you understand things. I think that can be very healing and that can make someone feel very whole. There's a safety in un having an understanding. And I know a lot of this stuff is beyond our understanding, but whatever we can compile in our soul to help us um, just feel like, Oh, wow this is who I am and this is what I can do um, I think that brings a, a kind of security to people absolutely so we hope you guys found this interesting we'll give you more updates as we get more information and uh, go into the the wars the Lyran wars which are still ongoing to this very very day mm -hmm. so even in the higher densities you know in the heavenly realms so to speak there are these battles that are going on right now yeah, I, it's all very, very mind-boggling, but we're gonna we're gonna pick it apart. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Uh, we want to say thank you to our Patreon members. Everything you guys do is really helpful. To make a one-time donation, you can make that on Ko-Fi for one time, or you can also set it up monthly. Um, and uh, check out Medicinal Foods. Excellent place, excellent site where you can find out about mind, body, information, and awakening truly starts within, and that's why we love these guys. Yep, make sure you do use coupon code EA and you get a discount, and it does support the channel. Much blessing and much love to you guys, the children of Tiamat and Earth. Yes. As always, namaste. Namaste. <laughs>